Well, good morning, everybody. Top of the morning. Hello, everyone out there. Whether you're listening to us live or you're joining us on YouTube, we certainly appreciate you stopping by. Good and morning, good afternoon, yes. good evening, good 3 Salut- a.m., whatever it is. Greetings and salutations. Um, anything that's welcoming, we we are, well, we're saying that. <laughs> this is uh, Lighthouse uh, for the Blind, Fort Worth support group um, adjustment to blindness a couple devices here today we're going to talk about um kevin i guess you're going to talk about yeah. the uh, the ruby yes and i'm going to talk about i have the braille note touch plus which is a note taker for the blind um it's got braille and speech and uh, so yeah if you want to you want to go first kevin yeah sure so firstly uh, while while everything that we're demonstrating here are uh, devices that we have in our technology evaluation center, or we call it ATEC. Um, and so these these pieces are uh, our technology that we would evaluate somebody on um, if they were to come into our eval center. So just to give you kind of a little bit of a sample of what of what we have. Granted, this won't be ex- too in depth, but just enough to give you a little bit of a flavor of of, of what these devices are, how they work and how they could possibly benefit you. Uh, so I have here with me today what's called the Ruby Universal. It is a handheld uh, video magnifier, some say you know, handheld CCTV, but it does um, much the same. And it's actually, uh, Ruby's been around for quite a while, haven't they, Sean? Yes, they have. Ruby uh, came out, I think, around 2002 or so, maybe a little after. And it's, uh, it's been a really good handheld magnifier. It's made by Freedom of Scientific. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and it has a lot of features on it. Um, it is especially helpful for uh, when you're on the go. Because, you know, we've all seen desktop CCTVs. I, in fact, I did one that was a Topaz a week ago or two. And that's not mobile. I mean, no. once you, that's basically you... When you get that, you put it where you think you're going to keep it, and that's where it stays. Uh, it's not compact. You can't put that in your purse. I mean, <laughs> or you have to have a really big purse. Yeah, you would. <laughs> or maybe, I don't know, uh, a wheelbarrow to carry it around. <laughs> um, but with the Ruby Universal, it's, it's quite compact. Uh, I'm going to go over some of the features here uh, briefly. And so, first of all, the Ruby Universal... I'm going to hold it up here. Is got a handle here on the underside, so that you can hold it um, as it, as you would maybe a, a handheld magnifier. And it's also collapsible as well. You've heard that cl- uh, collapsing sound as it clicked in place. It's got a couple different modes for magnification. It um, it does take, I think, four. Tri- Four AAA batteries uh, that are rechargeable. You also can get. It also uses. Uh, can you use four uh, AAA alkaline batteries as well? And it has a charger that it comes with that you can plug in. It's got multiple uh, ad- adapters, I believe. Right, Sean? Yeah. So uh, just just a side note there. Since uh, Freedom Scientific sells their products all over the mm-hmm. world. They also sell all the plugs for yes. wherever you might live all over the world. <laughs> Absolutely. Which is why I think, in part, this is why it's called the Ruby Universal, because it has all those universal plugs so that it can be used in different ports. Um, now, I believe that once it's fully charged, it keeps a charge uh, for a couple of hours at least. Um, but you think about it, you know, are you going to use this for two hours straight? Unlikely. And mostly, this is going to be used for spot reading, right? So, you know, if you're in the grocery store and maybe there's, I don't know, maybe there's a, a price tag or maybe there's a coupon or uh, a, a, a label on, a, on an item, you know, this, this would be particularly helpful for identifying what that is when you're, when you're shopping. All right, so, and I'll mention other, some other examples later, but so uh, I have here in front of me I've got, I'm going to pull this up to the camera. All right. So, I got this now. I have it put in 
a, um, we'll have a landscape mode. Because you can you can you can collapse the handle underneath, and then lay it flat in landscape mode, so it's lengthwise. And then you can click the power button up here uh, at this top left corner. So uh, up here, and it's in landscape mode. I have my big hands in the way here, but I'll get them out in a moment. But up here, that button, I have my finger on, and I believe that button is green. I'm going to click it, and we should have video on there. Is that correct, Alex? Yes. All right. All right. So, so I have here on the screen um, maybe an image or some lettering. When you have it collapsed with the handle underneath and you lay it flat, the default magnification mode is 5x, 5x magnification. And the button over here at its um, top right corner is your magnification button. So you could click that as it's laying flat to adjust the size of the image on the screen. So it starts off at 5. X and I believe it goes up to 7.5. You click it again, it gets larger. And then you click it one more time. I think you go back to the original size. Is that right, Alex? Yes. Okay. All right, so we're back at the original magnification. Now, this also has what's called a freeze frame option. I'm going to hold it steady here. It's over here at the bottom. It, 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 it is the bottom right corner that's facing you, facing the camera here. So I'm going to click that. Right. So what that does is it freezes the image on the screen. So, I think we have a frozen image on there, Alex? No. Okay, let me just fly here for a second. Now, how about now? Yes. Okay, so the image is frozen on there, and you can actually make it larger as the image is frozen. It's gone. It's gone. Okay. Get picture again. All right, so let's try this again. Sorry, folks, still having technical difficulties. All right, so I'm going to click the freeze frame button. Image is frozen, and while it's frozen, you can still make the image larger or smaller. As I'm doing now, as I'm toggling, there's three different modes. 5x, 7.5, and then 10x, and then goes back to the original size. Uh, to exit out of the freeze frame mode, you can just click the freeze frame button again to exit out of that. Now, a lot of folks with visual impairments, we, you know, color contrast is very important. It's a very important uh, component to being able to see how we're reading. And no different with this. The Ruby here has multiple modes of magnification or multiple modes of color filtering. So you can click this button here at the bottom uh, left corner. If it's a landscape. Sure. All right. So I'm going to toggle here. So we should be changing color schemes, right, Alex? Yes. Okay, so we got multiple ones. We've got the inverted contrast. We've got probably the black background, yellow text. <coughs> Excuse me. So again, you can just toggle through there until you find the one, the version that you like. And 
um, that works best for your visual uh, comfort level. All right. Now, you, that's, again, this is kind of a desktop mode here. In other words, you're laying it flat on a desk. But you can flip the handle out on the side and hold it like you would maybe a normal light of magnifier, as I mentioned earlier. And in that case, you could use it well, you know, when you're in the store or if you're reading a prescription bottle, perhaps. Many, many applications in the home or something such as this. So those are just a, bit, a few features on the uh, Ruby. Those are kind of the, the majors. There are some minors as well. I think it has the ability to uh, save photos or save images on there to be stored. I think it's up to 15 you can store on this particular device. So you can go back to them later and uh, delete them or keep them. But Rubies, they're pretty, they're pretty durable. What do you think, Sean? Yeah, yeah, they're very, very popular. They have several different uh, Ruby models, several different screen sizes and all that kind of stuff. So Yeah, I think with this one, we're dealing with about, it looks like probably a six inch length. It's probably seven. Six Either five or seven. seven. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you get a lot of coverage with a, a screen like this. And keep in mind, all of these, all of the, even the handhelds, all the way up to the desktop models of the different digital magnifiers or video magnifiers as they're actually more commonly mm -hmm. considered now but they're all high definition screens and they're all HD cameras so you get you get a good HD camera and you get a good HD screen mm -hmm. in fact we have employees here that use them in their uh, as part of their job mm -hmm. they're out in the manufacturing and they're labeling products or putting shipping tags on things and they have to confirm that you know that you know that they're indeed putting the right label on the right item that's that's important when you're shipping <laughs> yeah <laughs> so they would use something or do use something very uh, very similar to the Ruby but and just a little bit just a little bit about the Ruby certainly there are some more features but uh, hope that whets you all the appetite out there all right well I guess we can move on now to the um, Braille Note Touch and let me just get over here real quick. Um, so the Braille Note Touch is made by a company called Humanware. And Humanware has been around for a long time. I used to have a, uh, a speech synthesizer back in the DOS days. That definitely ages me. But uh, and it was called the Keynote Gold, and it was made by, it's actually made by Pulse Data in New Zealand, and that's actually where Humanware started. Um, so, um, we've come a long way since mm -hmm. the Keynote Gold days. You know, they actually had a couple of uh, laptop-like devices in the 90s um, that, and, and, and so in talking about this Braille Note Touch Plus, the software that it runs um, is called Keysoft. So Keysoft actually did start back in the 90s on their, on their devices that were more laptop-like. And it's continued to evolve and get new features and everything else. And uh, so now uh, we have this device. I'll hold it up here. Is that good, Alex? Um, so this is really, if I lift the lid up here, you'll see there's a tablet underneath here. Um, and really in all intents and purposes, this is a, a, um, a box or a, um, I can't, what are, what's the word I'm thinking of? Um, a container mm -hmm. that holds a tablet and a braille display. Um, and so you have, you have this braille keyboard here that folds down or that you can fold up and actually get to the tablet. Um, and then you have a, this is actually a 32 cell braille display 32. underneath here. Nice. So 32 cells. Um, it is stereo. 
Uh, so it's got stereo speakers on it. It's got um, uh, a couple of USB ports in the back here. I got two USB ports. I got an HDMI port so I can connect to a display, a remote display. Um, got a, a multimedia card back here in the back. And uh, specs wise, uh, it's got four gigs of memory. It's got 64 gigs of space. Uh, so decent amount of room for documents and such. Uh, this does run on Android uh, version 8.1. I think I think it's KitKat is the name of the operating system. KitKat? Yeah. So Android names their operating systems after candy bars. Wow, that sounds delicious. <laughs> <laughs> I love KitKat. <laughs> they, um, they don't have one to have called Snickers, do they? I mean. No, but they have... Um, <laughs> Oh man! If you go back and yeah, it's, it's, that'd be a good that'd be a good um, <laughs> that'd be a good game show question there. What yeah. are the different Android models uh, operating systems? Yeah, um, so it, I believe it's eight point one. They say it's upgradable to nine version nine of Android. So, but really, so what you have here. Um, when you turn this device on, it boots up an Android. However, the software that's built into it is called Keysoft. And so uh, when Keysoft loads, it's more menu-driven. Um, you can get into the, the Android operating system, and you can download apps onto this device. But primarily, um, the, ma the major plus is that you have a you have a menu. You have custom applications like a word processor, web browser. Well, it's uh, Google Chrome. You also have um, a KNFB reader because this does have a camera on it, so you can you can take pictures of documents and read them. Wow, that's amazing. Um, it's got a Daisy player, so you can download Daisy books, uh, Bard books, that kind of thing. Um, you can, it's got a microphone, like I said, it's got stereo speakers, um, so it's really nice. It's got really good speech as well as you'll hear in here in just a moment. I'm going to turn it on, and let it boot up. It says starting Keysoft here. It's got a little, little thing that's kind of moving around in a circle. The Braille display, like I said, it's 32 cells. You have cursor routing buttons above each cell on the front voice assist button on the front of the device we have four major keys so you have starting in the left you have previous pan left and then on the right side you have pan right and next so those are the buttons that kind of let you notification let you Email. navigate 44 new method lock button Bluetooth on. Swipe up to unlock. Unlock. Bluetooth on. Unlock. Button. Device unlock. My menu. My menu. Accessibility volume set to 85%. Top. So now we're booted into uh, Keysoft. And um, I can use these buttons on the front. The previous and next to move through the menu. Easy reader plus. Top. Key mail. Key mail. File manager. Key files. So the first one we had uh, easy reader which is the daisy player. Then we had email. We have the file manager here. Um, internet. Chrome. Internet. Web browser. It's Chrome. Word processor. Keyword. And we got the word processor. I'm going to go ahead and pull this up. Um, so on the Braille keyboard here, we have uh, you know a regular Braille keyboard, dots 1, 2, 3, and dot 7, which is your backspace on the left, the space bar in the middle. On the right side, we have dots 4, 5, 6, and dot 8. Dot 8 is generally your enter key. I'm going to press enter. Keyboard menu. Create. So it took me into a second menu. I have a couple of choices here I'll go through real quick. You have create to create a new file. Open. Open to open a file. Print. Print. We can print to a printer. Emboss. Or we can emboss. We can emboss direct to a to a Braille embosser. Settings. The settings. Bottom. 
and then we're at the bottom here. So I'm gonna go back to the top. top. Settings. Oops. Bottom. Oops. Emboss. Print. Emboss. Open. Create. Edit box. End of document. So now I'm into a blank document. I, have, I can feel my cursor here on the left side of the screen. And I can write in Braille. I could do. Um, dot S H A W N. Sean. Dot K E E N. Team. I wrote my name. Um, there's, you know, you have all kinds of commands for moving around your documents. Um, there is a command structure. Um, this might sound familiar, Kevin, because to, to move to the top of the documents is dots one, two, three in the space bar. Yes. And to move to the bottom of the docu document is dot four, five, six in space very, bar. Very voiceover. <laughs> yeah. Voiceover. Related. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Excellent. That's, that's really nice. Really, really nice. So, um, new line. Press enter there, and I get a new line. So, I showed in the beginning how you could lift up this Braille keyboard and actually have the um, the tablet here. So, it's just a it's a touch screen tablet here. I want to show you a feature that this device has. It's really cool. Um, so, if I rest my wrists on kind of like on the braille display where the braille is and I touch I push I put all all of my fingers on the screen I feel a little a little quick vibration and that just means that it's calibrated so now what I can do is I can type on the touch screen as if I was typing on the braille keyboard H Wow. And so I just typed that. Um, I can use, um, I think I have. Space. Let's see. K E V dots three four Oops. dots three four I N Keston. Well, it was close. Oh, it was Keston. I, I Keston. like that. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, I'll, I'm gonna I, keep I, that. I think you might be rushing a little bit there. Yeah. No, I'm not in a hurry. Go ahead. Sorry, dad jokes. Um, so yeah, you, you and now I've seen people that they they'll actually turn the speech off, and they are so good at this that they can just go like crazy, you know, <laughs> go really fast. And uh, it 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 is a little bit different at first, a little different to get used to, but. Hey, the iPhone has a, a similar feature where you can uh, you can braille on the uh, on the screen. So uh, yeah, very very nice. And I just flip the uh, the keyboard back and put it down on the tablet, and then I'm back to the uh, just the regular typing. Do you want to save your document? No button. Keyword menu. Create my menu. Easy reader plus. I am back to the main menu. Um, like I said, this this device has many features to it. It's got Internet, the email, the word processor. Word processor. Um, then it says down here, all applications. And this is main how I get apps. to Braille terminal. The, the other um, uh, other applications involved here. And, and I'll tell you one thing that is that is neat is you can you can customize your menu. So generally, uh, note takers are really popular with with uh, students, uh, those in K twelve or even in college, and so especially the K twelve students. Um, sometimes their teachers they kind of want to lock this down. They don't want to allow their student to be able to get everywhere, so they can actually create a, um, a like a custom menu where there's maybe you can't get to anything else. Um, it has a braille terminal, so uh, you can connect this to a computer. You could connect to a to an iPhone as well, and just use it as a braille display. So you know, I could I could be Bluetooth to my iPhone, and uh, then I have all the features of my note taker. But I can also switch over and and use my iPhone with with the braille display. You can do the same thing with Jaws or NVDA on a computer. 
Not a calendar. Camera. Camera. Chrome. Clock. Contact. Clock. Contact. Drive. Duo. Easy Reader Plus. Files. Firebird Mobile. Several just, uh, you know, some of these are more custom Android apps, but um, you, you do have the Play Store. You can download other apps. Um, it, it may vary a little bit on the ones that are accessible or not. Um, but like I said, this thing's got 64 gigs of memory. It's got a headphone jack and microphone jack on the right side. Um, battery life is something around seven, eight, eight hours or so. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's quite... Very, Quite a very versatile. Versatile, yeah. yeah. You could use. I mean, if somebody uh, in school, be the high school or college, that would be a powerful tool to have have at their disposal. Yeah, and and they come out with updates a couple times a year. They're always adding new features, and uh, you know the the note takers that are out there right now. Uh, there, I think there are three. And uh, uh, personally, this has kind of become my favorite. Although there are other options depending on your needs. And because of the tech of all, you're becoming quite familiar with <laughs> all of them. And I've, yes. Uh, I've, I've become really familiar, um, especially lately, I've been learning uh, to use JAWS from the Braille keyboard. So I have a Focus 40 Braille display here as well. And uh, so I've been learning how to get to uh, the desktop and open applications and navigate my email via Braille commands instead of yeah. keyboard commands. So, All right, I assume you're using some kind of, of keyboard keystroke. Yeah, so list. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, so there are you know, you have your Braille keyboard here on the uh, the focus mm -hmm. and there are Braille commands for uh, you know, like Windows M it would be your your command to get to the desktop. Well, on a Braille display, um, that's dot four, eight, space, and then the letter M. So yes. that would get you to the desktop. So it's a, it's a lot of transposing. You think of, okay, I'm going to hit control A. Um, that would be um, dot three, eight, space, mm -hmm. then A <laughs> on a Braille keyboard. So. And, and certainly, this, this would, the kind of device would be more geared towards a, 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 a user of Braille who's... who's quite adept is you know, using Braille for many years, I would assume. Yeah, and I mean, how are, you could, I mean, you can connect a keyboard mm -hmm. to this device, okay. and you could do that as well, but yeah, primarily, it's generally going to be someone that's a Braille power reader, users. power Braille user. Yeah. But it's, it's very nice. Do we have any, uh, any questions screen out there? Screen. Wednesday, you, August 5th. You're with us live, you want to ask a question on your computer, if you're at your in front of your keyboard, you can do uh, Alt-Y to raise your hand. Mm -hmm. And if you're dialed in, it's star 9. I don't think we even, I'm not uh -oh. sure if we even have anybody today. Um, and always, if you have questions, if there's something you want to ask, um, even if you're watching this on YouTube, um, you can send us an email. Mm -hmm. Uh, my email is skeen, S-K-E-E-N, at lighthousefw.org. Yes, and likewise, my email address is khiggins, K-H-I-G-G-I-N-S, at lighthousefw.org. And I know right now we are living in some challenging times with, with respect to COVID, and we, you know, we're not able to provide training in the in the traditional way that we may have but we are still here as the service we still uh, can do training in some cases we have been doing a lot of it remotely um, via phone via via computer and so if it's training if you need step-by-step -step instruction on a particular tool or technique uh, please don't hesitate to contact us you can always call us. Always call us. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. 817-332-3341. Mm -hmm. um, do follow us. Oh, Bob's got a question. Oh. Go ahead, Bob. I don't know if you're muted or not. but uh, You said that's your favorite note taker. You like it better than the L Braille? Um, I, 
and, and this is just my opinion. This is not um, this is not Sean the evaluator. This is my own personal opinion. Um, I have to clarify that there. <laughs> um, the I think the Braille Note Touch is more of a more of a uh, traditional note taker, and I think the L Braille is more like a laptop. Um, I I don't believe uh, I'm still getting used to the L Braille, but I don't think it has the you know it, it's not it doesn't have KeySoft, so. Uh, you're still using Office, you know, Microsoft Word, Outlook. I think it more resembles a laptop than a note taker. And I, I don't know, that this is my observation as well. I, I feel that the Umbrella is a little maybe on uh, heavier, not as compact, perhaps. These both of these devices are pretty heavy. Pretty heavy, okay. Um, you wanna Sure, I'll take a look. Let's see here. Oh yeah, that is. Yeah, a little bit of weight to it. Good. Um, yeah. I guess it's just all in the eye of the eye of the beholder, or the <laughs> hand of the beholder in our case. The neck of the beholder. The neck of the beholder. <laughs> the neck is trapped around your yeah your neck as you're carrying it. So. Now your point's well taken. The uh, L Braille doesn't have uh, applications uh, specific to uh, using Braille. Yeah, um, now, you know, the l Braille is slim. Um, it does have, you know, pretty good memory. It's got pretty good space. I mean, it's quick. It's really quick. Uh, the one I have here, it's a 40 cell. Um, one thing I do like about that is that, you know, how when you're docked into the l Braille, um, you can use the computer. You could also... Uh, connect to other devices, an iPad, an iPhone, and a computer. Generally, that's, I mean, my Focus 40 here, um, it's Bluetooth to my computer, my iPhone, and my tablet, my iPad. Um, a lot of times, even during these Zoom calls, I can uh, get to my messages. If somebody here sends me a message saying somebody's, perhaps somebody's typed a question in the chat or, you know, something like that, along those lines, it's really handy for that so there are a there are a number you know a number of braille devices out there um, here we have the focus braille displays we also have the brilliant braille displays made by humanware um, there's you know there's alva uh, we don't have any of the alva displays or uh, the vario ultra but there I mean there's we got it. It's a great selection yeah, for sure. It's yeah, it's certainly, and, and the kind of tech evaluation and the emphasis is is a, uh, on comparison. At least having it with the two or more having options, having yeah. options, yeah, yeah to, to find what works best for the individual. But to you, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. Well, we pre appreciate everybody yep. joining us today. Um, like I said, join us on Facebook. Uh, like us on Facebook, Twitter.